again everyone, I'm Richards and welcome to another RHS update video. 0.4.9 is our next major update and there's lots of new content and fixes we're excited to show you. We'll follow roughly the same format we've done in the last few ones, starting with the Russian Armed Forces, then the United States Armed Forces, the Serbian Armed Forces, and then the independent stuff. So let's get into it. Russian Armed Forces, we're going to start with vehicles. The first new vehicle is a self-propelled gun, the 2S1, known as the Carnation in English, or Gvozdika in Russian. It is fitted with the 2A18 122mm howitzer. It is fully tracked and is capable of firing at a range of around 15 kilometers when using conventional munitions. In RHS, the vehicle has several camouflage schemes, you can see two of them here a few visual customizable options, such as these front water skirts, as you can see on the rear, and a few items you can also see in the garage. It entered service in the early 1970s, but this howitzer is still relevant today thanks to its powerful gun and good battlefield mobility. This awesome model was recently completed by Soul Assassin. As we continue to modernize our main battle tank fleet, the T-90 has received several new modern versions. The first one you can see here is the T-90SA version 2004, and the 2016 version can be seen here. Both of these are further developments of the T-90 using the welded turret and have additional add-on armor. The main change includes the more powerful 1000 horsepower engine as well as better active and passive protection systems, commonly known as Stora. And as you can see based on the side of this vehicle, there is also additional add-on armor fitted, including slat armor on the rear. However, the T90 isn't done there. The most modern version, the T90 F... However, the T90 isn't done there. The most modern version, the T90MS, or Object 188SM, has also been added. This modern version has an even more powerful engine, new fire control system as you can see by the new optics, hunter-killer optics as you can see here with an independent gunner and commander sights, and a new and much stronger reactive armor. All of these awesome new additions to the T90 were made by Festival. As you can see, there is also a desert camouflage version available. Finally, and to great anticipation, the much requested and talked about T-14 Armada main battle tank is making its debut in 0.4.9. The T-14 features a 2A82 125mm gun that is similar to that of the T-90, but this new variant is specific to the vehicle and utilizes a new autoloader system, which can hold a total of 45 rounds and 32 in the autoloader system. The vehicle is capable of moving in excess of 80 kilometers per hour, and the main change between this and the T-90 is that the whole crew of three sits in an armored capsule in the hull which you can see just here, uh, which gives them a higher level of protection and the turret is completely unmanned. This vehicle will see some new feature improvements going forward, but players can begin putting it to good use in this version. We can also thank Soul Assassin, who's been tremendously busy over the past few months working on these awesome new vehicles. Finally, De 12 Monkey has put in some modifications to the Mi-8 helicopter to produce this MI-8T early version with a more original engine. And this is also available for other factions. And you can see here we have the rear doors opened, which is one of the configurable attributes of this aircraft. For weapons, the Russian Armed Forces have a few new things. The first thing is the variety of mines available. On the left, you can see the OZM-72 mine, available with a remote detonation and tripwire version. 
For explosives, several quantities of TNT have been added, with tactical packaging in green and the normal packaging as well, which you can see the different quantities here. For weapons, two of our special weapons have received some cool upgrades. The AS Val and VSS now have a grip version, which you will select by clicking the grip designator in the arsenal. These ones can now support modular grips, such as the angled foregrip, as well as various vertical foregrips, which you can see here. Combined with the NPZ rail system, these two highly specialized weapons can now carry a myriad of customization options. Finally, for uniforms, the new Gorka R has been added. This complements the existing Gorka that has already been in game. With that, that's some of the new equipment you can find in the Russian forces. Let's move on to the US forces now. Let's jump over to the US forces. Just as with our Russian side, our US side also has three new exciting vehicles. The first is the much awaited, memed, requested, and memed again, and requested a thousand times over. It is of course, the Striker. For the one person who isn't aware, the Striker is an eight-wheel drive, armored fighting vehicle that has many variants. The most common role is the one we're introducing first the M1126 Infantry Carrier Vehicle, or ICV. This vehicle is based upon the Canadian LAV-3, but until recent variants, it's actually turretless and features the remote weapon system instead. It is said to be a hybrid of both an IFV and an APC because of its characteristics. The first version features a working, but prototype, real-time Blue Force tracker system, which I'll show you now. As you can see here, the map of Livonia is displayed, and this will move with our vehicle. We can even adjust the zoom of the map. The vehicle also has two air sentry positions, noted by the hatches on the top. This vehicle will remain in development as we improve the interior, refine the features, accessories, and hopefully make some additional variants. For now, several customization options are present, and woodland and desert camouflage schemes are available as you can see. This awesome vehicle was created by a joint effort of Peter and other developers. While the Striker may have had many requests, very few people even know the next two vehicles exist. But that doesn't mean they're not cool. These are the final two versions we're producing of the RG-33 Mine Resistant Ambush Protected Vehicle family. However, these are a lot different than our M1232 and M1237s that are already in game. The first one we're going to look at is here, the M1239 Special Operations Command Armored Utility Vehicle, which is a mouthful but in-game we've designated the M1239 AUV. This 6x6 vehicle is a combination of a flatbed truck and an MRAP. The cab has three doors. That's right, it has three, which probably makes it one of the only vehicles in the world to have an asymmetric door design, other than that and the Hyundai Veloster. But it still seats four. It mounts the M153 remote weapon system, as you can see here, fitted with either an M2 heavy machine gun or a Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher. There's two primary types of this vehicle available in game, a flat deck version which can load vehicles, which you are not seeing here, and a deployment version that is preloaded with cargo, which is the one you can see here. This vehicle is programmed to provide vanilla resupply, fuel and repair functions which are similar to the M1078A1R Special Operations Vehicle Gun Truck which we produced in the past. This vehicle as you can see is an absolute beast. It towers above the Striker, a human, and almost every other vehicle in the game. 
and this vehicle can be found under the SOCOM designation as it is designed to allow protected resupply of Special Operations Forces. A Woodland version is also available, but must be selected through the Garage options, as SOCOM doesn't have any Woodland vehicles by default. The second MRAP is also designed to transport soft operators throughout the battle space, but it's not designed for resupply. It's this, the M1238A1 Armored Security Vehicle, which is a four-wheel drive version of the RG33 platform, with some other unique changes. As you can see looking underneath, whereas the M1239 has a solid axle, the M1238 has fully independent suspension on all four corners. Including the driver and gunner, this vehicle transports six personnel. It also has two air sentry positions on the back, similar to the Striker, where personnel can fire, independent of the main weapon. It is also armed with the M153 remote weapon system and can have either an M2 or Mark 19. It has several customization options already, such as a tow bar, which you can see fitted to this one for recovery, the Rhino counter IED device, which you can see on the front, the Duke counter IED system, as well as woodland and desert camouflage pattern. And if you're wondering, yes, all American MRAPs have desert interiors no matter what color they paint on the outside, which is a unique feature. Let's move on to some weapons. We also have a very new exciting weapon, but first we're going to take a look at two new weapons that have had some new versions created. First, thanks to Toady 2 k we now have a modular stock version of the Timeless M16A4. Next, uh, speaking of stocks, the M249 light machine gun now has its most modern lightweight stock available and the improved bipod, making this now the most modern version of the M249. But now the thing you have all been waiting for. The new weapon is the Mark 17, known as the Scar H or Scar Heavy rifle. This is a 7.62 by 51 millimeter chambered weapon that allows for greater range of engagement beyond that of the 5.56 platforms, but it still allows for automatic fire similar to a lighter rifle. This weapon is currently used by SOCOM, or the Special Operations Command of the United States, and it has several versions centered around barrel length. I have here fitted the standard barrel, but a CQB short barrel as well as a marksman long barrel are also available. There are also some dangerously patriotic patterns that I won't spoil, but users can take a look at in the arsenal or anywhere else where they're going to get weapons. Magazines have also had some really cool changes. With magazine proxies, we've now separated these items out from their weapons. Here's just a few of them that have been added. Other things include M249s having coyote boxes, enhanced aluminum 30 round magazines for the AR platform of rifles, and of course the SCAR now has magazines of its own. For camouflage, gear, and uniforms, we have added the AOR2 version of the G3. The reason we have done this is we already have some AOR2 items in game, so now you have a uniform to go along with it. And the main new piece of kit is this plate frame plate carrier. This is an ultralight carrier, which has a few versions depending on user role. And I put a few of them up here for you guys to take a look. All right, that's a look at some of the new things you can find in the US forces. Let's move on to the Serbian forces. have also received the 2S1 with the specific SAF camouflage pattern. And with the Russian forces gaining the early MI-8, the Serbian forces also have the early MI-8T. For equipment, the SAF also have the Mark 17, but with the specific black camouflage that is fitted to their rifles and the markings are also accurate. Also, one of the more unique features of the Serbian forces is this veil or balaclava which is designed to obscure the identity of a soldier.
Alright, let's move on to the independent forces. The independent forces also have some really cool new items. The absolutely incredible L1A1 rifle, which is a version of the FAL, has its initial version in this release, but there's still a lot of development we have to do going forward. For now, we have two initial versions, one with wood furniture and the other here with polymer furniture. Further to that, some of the awesome work Gertie has done from the Westwall project has come in, including the M40 and M42 classic helmets and other cool headgear. And finally, the BRDM2 and the UH-1H helicopter also have some additional camouflage patterns. Further to Gertie's work, we have also added a bunch of cool new old anti-personnel and anti-tank mines and explosives. This is just some of the major new items that are in this version of the mod. Remember to read the changelogs for a full list of fixes, new stuff, and submit feedback on our bug tracker if you find any further issues. On behalf of the entire team, thanks for supporting the mod and we look forward to bringing more cool stuff to you in the future. Bye for now.